Well, Easter is a well-known thing in the Western world. In fact, it's uh, for many people one of the nice long weekends of the year. And so I don't know this past week when you went back to school or you went back to work, whether it was a conversation piece, actually. Uh, perhaps the question came across, uh, what did you do for Easter? What did you do for Easter? And whether or not someone is a Christian, you might very likely get asked this question. And in two different ways, Poch and I were asked this question. I was reminded, actually, of last year's Easter. Uh, Poch and I, when we realized she was pregnant, we joined one of these pregnancy groups that helps you get ready, and you have a support group. There's 12 couples. And on Easter Sunday, we suddenly saw our group chat explode. Why? Because people are posting pictures of their baby in like a stuffed bunny costume or things like that and Easter eggs and things like that. And suddenly we realized, although I don't think anyone else in our pregnancy group are Christians, somehow the Easter weekend was special for them. This past week, just the other night, Poch and I have been praying and thinking about who uh, in our neighborhood will God lead us to meet and know more while we were having some drinks and dessert with uh, one of our neighbors. And they asked the same thing this, this past week, knowing that Easter just crossed. He said, did you do anything special for force this, uh, this past Easter? Was there an Easter egg hunt? or anything like that. And again, for them, they thought Easter is something important. And did you do something to commemorate Easter in a way? I remember being a bit dumbfounded and thinking as, as a Christian, <laughs> uh, who I believe my life and salvation exists because and only because of Easter, uh, I often uh, stumble to know how do I respond? How do I tell, as I said to the children, these different people, uh, Easter means that Christ suffered he died, and he rose again for us. And I still haven't figured out how to bridge that gap when people are asking, oh, did you put force in a, a bunny costume? <laughs> or did you remember that your Savior suffered, died, and rose again? I haven't figured out how to square that, but I'm trying to learn. Well, I'm going to focus on our passage from John that I just read uh, recently. And often, Thomas is the subject of that. But I want to look at this passage from a bit of a different angle. And as we go through these 50 days of Easter together, uh, instead I have entitled the sermon, Four Easter Gifts from Jesus. I say four. I don't say they are the only four, uh, but in our passage, I think uh, there's something of four things for us today that I hope you and I can be challenged by. And I think why I do not say the only four, and I, uh, I've been encouraged lately in some of the Bible studies I've had with some of you, in this room is remembering how deep and infinite well the Bible is, and that every time you and I open to God's word, whether alone or together, there are such spiritual truths and realities for us. And so as we look at what the Gospel of John has for us, I want to look at four gifts, and with each gift, I will also lead us in a brief prayer that we may receive more of these gifts today. Well, let's look a bit at our passage uh, from John chapter 20, and again, this is on page 1081 in your Bibles. You can follow along. I'll highlight a few verses, uh, obviously, on the screen, but it's going to help you to have it in front of you so your eyes can follow along as well. Well, in our passage, we're told it was the first day of the week, and I said at the beginning of the service, if people ever ask you, why do Christians meet on Sundays? Well, this traces back there. What better day for God's people to have their main gathering, not just on Sunday, but our main gathering, then on the same morning that we remember the risen and new life of Jesus. And we find out the situation actually in our passage does not start very well. It says, on the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews. So this is a, a very unhappy situation they find themselves in. And uh, into that place, a huge interruption happens for the disciples, and a huge interruption for the whole course of mankind happens when Jesus comes and stands among them. Let's look at this a little bit together. And I think, as we think about the first thing I want to, uh, gift I want to focus on, Easter gift number one is peace, or in Hebrew, what is known as shalom. And as and I've talked about this before, but shalom gives us a bigger picture than what we might think of as English speakers of just something like, oh, peace, but in fact, shalom. So on the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, peace be with you. Let's try to put ourselves in a mindset of the disciples. 
They live in fear and grief and disappointment at this point. They're terrified. They've seen the drama that one of their own 12, one of the beloved disciples, ended up betraying Jesus and betraying them all. They saw their own failures. They had all promised to follow the rabbi, serve their Lord Jesus. And when push came to shove, they all, out of fear, turned away. Trauma. They had seen their Lord, their rabbi, and some of the disciples were there, saw him tortured, mocked, crucified, and then breathed his last breath. And so what utter sense of defeat they must have felt, a loss of hope, a loss of purpose. They had given years of their life now to follow Jesus, and now here they are. And they wondered, might we be next? And so if you might read some... uh, anti-Semitism and to fear the Jews. Remember, the disciples were Jews also. Uh, What they really mean is the people who are against Jesus, the people who are against um, what Jesus was about, the disciples were in fear of that. Might they come for us next? And into that place, Jesus stands among them. And what on earth should Jesus say at his entrance? And whenever a movie, when there's a great victory or the great uh, hero returns and they build up a music, the first words are very, very important. Well, Jesus looks at his disciples who have gone through betrayal, failure, trauma, and defeat, and he says, peace be with you, or for Hebrew, shalom, which is often a greeting. And the peace that Jesus gives, and the Hebrew concept of shalom is more than just a lack of violence or a lack of turmoil, but it's the flourishing of God's life, what God intends God's good life and wholeness to the full, Jesus comes back and says, peace, this peace I give to you and I offer to you. And in fact, it is repeated several times, and I've tried to highlight in green some of the contrast. We see fear here, and just on this slide, we're going to see peace again later on. And twice, as Jesus looks at them, he again says, peace be with you. And just earlier in the service, I also said, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And you guys return and say, I'm with your spirit. This is a Christian greeting that we say, all that we know about Jesus' risen and new life, that gives us a peace in our broken world. How much our world excels in anxiety and worry and chaos, Jesus comes to offer us something different, the opposite. That if we understand Jesus as our risen Lord and Savior, it gives us a peace that will guard our hearts. It gives us a peace that passes all understanding to know this is my Lord and Savior. He is the risen and resurrected and victorious one before us. So brothers and sisters, what would our lives look like? What would our church look like if we could live more deeply into the overwhelming security of knowing we have a risen Lord and Savior? who comes amongst us and says, peace be with you, a peace that passes all understanding. Let me lead us in a prayer. Jesus, we thank you for your peace, your shalom, your intention for us and the world. For each one of us, as we struggle with worry and anxiety and turmoil within, Lord, again, send your peace to us in this Easter season. For our community, protect us by your peace that passes all understanding. We ask in Christ's name. Amen. Easter gift number one, peace, the shalom of God himself. Second Easter gift, that of the Holy Spirit. That of the Holy Spirit. Let's go back to this first slide and just look at the second half. Again, Jesus says to them again, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I'm sending you. We're going to circle back to that line. But then after that, he says, and when he had said that, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. Regardless of whether the disciples were already believers, and for us as New Testament Christians, we realize the moment you believe in Jesus, we are given the Holy Spirit. Jesus now looks at his disciples who, as I mentioned, are in trauma, fear, and sense of failure gives them his peace, but then he breathes into them. The Lord and giver of life breathes into them. And what does he breathe? His Holy Spirit. 
And after these 50 days, as we celebrate Pentecost, we'll understand this was the intention of God in the beginning, making man in his image. Man falls, he redeems them. Jesus redeems them, but ultimately gifts the Holy Spirit to be God's presence within us. Just last week at Easter Sunday, we celebrated different baptisms and confirmations. Uh, for us in our service, we had uh, Cheris being confirmed and others at the 11 a.m. service. Uh, and in some people's case, they were baptized as a child. And later in their life, as they are confirmed, the bishop lays hands on them and prays for them. This is part of the symbolism and the tradition that we see here, that even though someone believes in Jesus, uh, they can receive more of the Holy Spirit. We see this in the book of Acts as well. And so as part of our tradition and confirmation and other times, even no matter how long we've been a Christian, we can pray for more of the Holy Spirit. And one of the Easter gifts we have to recognize of the new and risen life of Jesus is that Jesus imparts his spiritual blessing to us through the Holy Spirit. So in our mind's eye, if we ask ourselves, God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And if you had to do roll call, where is everyone? Where is the Father? Where is the Son? Where is the Holy Spirit? We might think of God the Father in the heavens above, whatever that you may imagine to be in the spiritual realms. We're told, roll call, where is Jesus? He's at the right hand of the Father, interceding for us. Okay? And last roll call, where is the Holy Spirit? Well, if the Father is somewhere in the spiritual realm and Jesus is figuratively at his right hand, it is the Holy Spirit that dwells in us and connects us to the Father and the Son. And so as we think about the amazingness of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Where we begin is the Holy Spirit. That is our spiritual connection to the Trinity. And whether at this very, very special occasion or every day of our lives as believers, we need the Holy Spirit. And we are promised and gifted the Holy Spirit. And at certain services like confirmation, we see how powerfully we pray for the Holy Spirit to fill the life of believers, and particularly in confirmation. And just earlier, uh, we sang in one of our worship songs, uh, and we dwell in you in the Spirit. And that's what we need as believers. That is our, the lifeblood of our spiritual lives. So brothers and sisters, what would our lives look like? What would our church look like? Instead of relying on ourselves or worrying with our human limitations, what would our lives and church look like if we continued to receive and be breathed on by Jesus with more power and presence of the Holy Spirit. That is an important gift of Easter. Let us pray. Jesus, we thank you that you breathe the Holy Spirit, and Father, you intended at Pentecost to pour out your Spirit on all flesh. Our Lord, for each one of us and for our church community, we ask for more of this Easter gift of the Holy Spirit, that we will not rely on our own gifts, power, or wisdom, but instead on your new life through the Holy Spirit. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we thank you that we are connected to you, the Holy Trinity, and that we are gifted you, the Holy Spirit. Now give us more of this this day, we ask in Christ's name. Amen. The second gift of the Holy Spirit. What about the third gift? I would call this belief or faith. Belief or faith. One thing I find so touching about after the resurrection is the way Jesus engaged two of his disciples in particular, Thomas and Peter. Thomas and Peter, we realize all the disciples scattered and abandoned Jesus, but Scripture, Holy Scripture records in particular the extent that they did and their failures of faith, that Peter denied Jesus three times, and here we see Thomas in disbelief, think, oh, until I really see it, I cannot believe. And instead of just them being examples of what not to do, they end up being examples of redemption because Jesus personally then reaches out to both Peter and Thomas in their very specific lack of faith or lack of commitment, call it whatever you want, and actually restores them in this personal, touching way. And here in the ways that Thomas doubts the resurrected Lord, and we're told that in the first encounter, Thomas wasn't there. Um, he wasn't there when Jesus came, and disciples tell him, but he's like, oh, I don't really believe it. But instead, 
Jesus then comes and meets him. So let's look at this here. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called a twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. And Thomas says to them, unless I see, you know, unless I feel, I will never believe. Well, eight days later, the disciples were inside again. Thomas is with them. And the doors are locked, and this again reminds us something about Jesus' new body is, has miraculous powers. It is a new resurrected body. But Jesus comes again and repeats our gift number one, shalom, peace be with you. And now, of all the people there, Jesus looks at Thomas, addresses him. He meets him and ministers exactly to Thomas what he needs and says to Thomas, he invites Thomas, okay, you said what you said. You need to see the wounds of my hands from crucifixion. And you see the wound, the spear left to my side. But Thomas, upon seeing Jesus, and seeing Jesus' invitation that's so specific and personal to him, just confesses, my Lord and my God. My Lord and my God. Oh, and how clearly one day when we stand, well, when we bow before the throne of Jesus, that we will also cry out, my Lord and my God. And one of the gifts here then we see in what we'll see in the rest uh, as the book of John comes near an end, we'll see the word belief uh, mentioned over and over again. I've tried to highlight this in green. So as Jesus comes to Thomas, he says, hey, do not disbelieve, but believe. And then, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. And what ends there is the words of Jesus. And now the editor, the author of the book, steps in. And as he thinks about how he closes his book, he writes this. Now, Jesus did many other signs in the present disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. How do we receive more faith in the resurrected new life of Jesus? By responding to Jesus in faith. And Jesus said, blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. So one of the gifts that Jesus meets Thomas in, and really what the whole book of John is written for, as we see in this little editorial comment, is that we may have faith and respond to our risen Lord and Savior. Well, I don't know how you feel about one of the gifts being faith. Um, I sometimes feel a little bit embarrassed about it. I am so often of little faith, similar to Thomas. Yet this reminds me, just like with Peter and Thomas, that Jesus knows our weakness, and he meets us there. And he lends out his hand and invites us into that next step of faith. And really, our spiritual life is like that, taking step by step of greater faith. And that's one of the gifts of Easter reality, is to learn to put our faith in our risen Lord and Savior who promises he'll be with us to the very end of age, the age, a God who calls us to be bold and courageous. So brothers and sisters, what might it look like in our lives or in our church community if we receive this gift of faith and we take that step of faith, that response, that we would have more boldness of faith, faith to respond to Jesus, more boldness of faith, so we might share just like John did so that others might believe in Jesus and have life in his name. Let us pray. Uh, Father, we thank you uh, that we are saved by grace, and this is not of ourselves. We're saved by faith, and that is given to us by you. So Holy Spirit, would you cause us to respond to you with greater faith, to receive more faith from you, in whatever step of faith you are calling each one of us in this room to take, give us courage and boldness to take that step. We ask in Christ's name. Amen. The third gift, that of belief or faith. Let us look at the fourth gift, that of purpose. Well, I want to circle back uh, to near the beginning of the passage in the same verse I covered with our children. And one of my professors, while I studied at Seminary Region College, this is probably one of his favorite verses, and he wrote a whole book thinking about the implications of this verse. So let's look at it together. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you, as the Father has sent me, even so 
I am sending you. Do we realize how much Jesus shares with us and how much we share with Jesus? As I was thinking about what to talk about with the children, and I couldn't quite put it in words because I think I so understand that Jesus is sent by God. I so understand his mission, his clarity about it, that directed all the steps of Jesus' life. I understand it about that about him, but what Jesus is trying to do is then turn that to us. Can we have such a clarity and purpose that infuses our life so we know how to speak, how to live, how to be together, uh, what to eat, what to do, how to spend our money, how to spend our time, how to spend our talents? Well, Jesus wants to give us this. And I think this is why my professor was so fascinated by these few words, because it really has a connection. As the Father sent Jesus, now so Jesus sends us. And I think right now we have a world that is starving for meaningful purpose. And it can feel like, what's the point? And I almost feel a very dark, and you see what's the most popular shows nowadays, and they're all very dystopian, all very dark. Because that's what people see coming. That's what they see in our world. And I agree, there are probably a few things in our world that are probably going to get harder before they get easier. There may be more suffering up ahead. But how we understand it and how we see it is really a question of purpose. Because if our whole purpose is just to live the good life and enjoy the most we can, then if waves of suffering, global conflict, climate crisis come, our purpose is shattered. But for Jesus, though he faced betrayal, trauma, mocking, torture, and death, what was different about that is there was a sense of the Father's purpose in that. And these mysterious lines want to impart that to us as well. Brothers and sisters, we are sent by Jesus. And each one of us has a different circumstance into which we are sent. But I pray one of the gifts of Easter is we will have that same clarity uh, from God to know that. And so what might our lives look like? What might our church look like if we had a greater sense of purpose and being sent by Jesus? And let's connect this with the second gift of the Holy Spirit. This is not a purpose where we're like, oh, how am I going to do this? Right after Jesus gives them the sense of being sent, he also breathes the Holy Spirit. He empowers his people to do that. And so, brothers and sisters, let us pray for this gift, fourth gift of purpose. Our Father, I pray for us individually or as a community where we may feel lost or purposeless. Jesus, our risen Lord and Savior, would you, uh, in, to each one of our hearts, speak the words again that you have a purpose and you have sent us that we may live our days filled with a sense of your purpose and presence with us. We ask in Christ's name. Amen. Well, I don't want to be a talking head. I think Easter is one of those things as Christians we go through every year. And uh, uh, as I shared these four different gifts, I want us to really have some time to think about um, and share with one another, actually, what, how would we respond, how do we reflect on these four different gifts? And so, uh, as I've done in the past, I want us to have uh, a sharing time of groups of three or four. And these are the two questions I want to uh, give you. And after I explain them, then I encourage you, if you want to move around or sit with the people around you, to share with one another about these things, okay? Which of the four gifts mentioned of Jesus do you desire today? So let me talk about the four gifts I mentioned, just to recap. Peace, or shalom, to live more in God's peace and shalom. Holy Spirit to be filled with more of God's presence, belief to respond with greater faith, or purpose to know you are sent by Jesus in your, and I'll add the word, particular circumstance. Okay? And so yes, the Sunday school answer would be to say, oh, I want all four, and that's, that's fine to all want all four, but I think to understand and listen closely to God, I want you, we're going to pause for a moment, but to share with your group, which of these four do you need now? What is, and for you in this season of life, uh, which of these four gifts speaks to you now?
And the second question, how might your life change as you receive more of that specific Easter gift this year? Okay. So I'm going to invite us to a moment of quiet uh, as you reflect on these four gifts of Jesus, and then we'll take a few minutes uh, to be with one another. Okay, we just had about a 30-second pause, but I invite you, uh, we're going to take about five to seven minutes. Please turn to some people around you. Uh, feel free to uh, leave the person you're beside to if you want, and uh, have a chance to mix up a little bit and have this time of sharing. Well, thank you everyone for your sharing. Uh, as I lead us in a prayer, uh, I haven't had a chance to hear everyone, what everyone has shared, but you have had a chance to hear. And you go, Actually, you guys stay together. Stay together for a second. We're going to pray. We're going to pray for one second. And since you guys shared... Uh, as I pray, I actually want you to silently think of the people in your group, because you've heard what they are desiring from Jesus today. Uh, and if it helps you to imagine having open hands to receive from Jesus, often when I pray alone, I find it helpful to have my hands before me, because I know every time I pray, I'm recognizing my need for Jesus. And I'm going to lead us in a prayer, but I would encourage you to be thinking of the people in your group and what they have shared, and also lifting up them up in pray. So let's pray. Jesus, we thank you for the mystery of your resurrection and all that it means for our salvation and uh, the peace you offer, your Holy Spirit, uh, the gift of more faith and the gift of be, uh, purpose in being sent by you. Lord, and for each one of us and what we've said or not said and what we recognize our need for you, Lord, we pray that we would receive from you today, Jesus, from hearing your word, from responding to your word, more of your peace or shalom, more of your Holy Spirit at work in our lives, more faith to respond to you with belief, and a greater sense of purpose in being sent in our lives. Jesus, we thank you that you love to pour out your gifts on your people, and would we receive from you today? Thank you, Jesus. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.